As I consistently noted, we're going to be guided by the science, the data, our ability to provide an environment that offers the simply best in class testing, tracing, and treatment options for students, faculty, and staff. As our ICS team has advised me, there are no risk-free options in return to our campus. As our enrollment to date reveals that Wildcats and their parents believe in the value of returning to campus to pursue their education. We know that others are unable to return to campus and we have planned for excellent alternatives that will be well supported this coming academic year. Each of us needs to make the best decision for ourselves and for those around us. That said, I know many of you are awaiting the answer to the question. Will the University of Arizona be open for in-person classes in the fall of 2020? The answer is yes. We will be offering classes in four learning modalities as we announced last week in-person, flex in-person, live online, and our iCourses. Students are choosing class schedules that best meet their needs. All of our students who will be living in our dormitories on campus will receive an antigen test at the McHale Center prior to moving into their dorms. If a student tests positive, she or he will be required to isolate for a 10 day period as a at a designated isolation facility or space. In addition, I am committed to frequently visiting students in these areas to ensure that we are properly caring for them as well as to better gauge our internal environment. Testing also will be available for all faculty and staff as well as those students who live off campus. My commitment is to be here for our students and to diligently monitor both the external and internal public health conditions. Please make the best decision for you and your health. We support you with whichever decision you make. If we need to adjust, we will. The options have been considered very carefully and always juxtaposed against what's happening in our environment, what's happening in our city, what's happening in our county, what's happening in the state, the nation, because our students and faculty come from all over. Every morning over the last couple of months, the president gets a situational report, a sit rep, that has all of that data, including the beds that are available in the hospital, ICU beds, ventilators, the amount of disease that's in the community, the death rate, and that's not only in our community, but around us as well, because we are all mutually dependent on one another in the state of Arizona. The degree of due diligence has been extraordinary to come to this point. And we recognize that there's going to be a diversity of opinion, especially in an academic environment. I've spoken to my colleagues all across the campus. I've spoken to families. I've spoken to students who have called. We've had special sessions with students because after all, we're here with the privilege of serving them and listening to them and what are their concerns and all of that over the last couple of months has been incorporated into all of these options that the president has presented. I, I will tell you that I, I felt like a surgical intern again reporting to my uh, chief of staff every day with there was never enough information the president would send us back repeatedly and say okay that's good but I want to know this and I want to know that and he's up in the middle of the night he's up in the middle of the morning I get texts and emails from him at two in the morning saying I just thought of something what about this there is no risk-free environment in this country today, period. If the student stays home, they're still going to go out. They're going to interact in their community. If they come here, we're going to try and control that. Part of it is, be, is how the student is going to accept some responsibility and the staff and the faculty to engage in the best public health practices that we have outlined. Without that engagement and compliance by all who have the privilege to come to our university, we cannot sustain any kind of opening because what will happen is the numbers will continue to rise and we'll have some problems and we'll have to stop. The president has made it clear if there's not compliance at every level in the best public health practices, he's ready to shut it down 
and go all digital if he has to. Based on the feedback we've gotten from students, from staff and faculty, and again, it's been diverse, but I would say leaning toward, tell us how we can get back in here. We wanna be part of the campus. We want our campus community. And we always respond, the president, myself and the team, but it's gonna be a new normal. You're not gonna come back to what you saw before. There is no single right answer. There are options that the ICS has presented to the president, along with the risk benefit analysis of each option. And it all comes down to students, faculty, and staff being compliant and following those best practice guidelines. And the other challenge that's not reflected on these is we have a health system that is struggling every single day. In California, I talked to my colleagues there at the University of California system, especially in the southern part of the state. The ICUs are full. The doctors are tired. The nurses are tired. It's been described as almost a combat zone atmosphere. So many people on ventilators. Nurses coming in and they know every day somebody's going to die. And you have to take that home. The mental health aspects of this are extraordinary. And because we're so focused on life and death, we're missing this mental health challenge that is robbing us of our ability to interact normally. We've been speaking with our student health here, as well as on the campus, to how do we make sure we also have mental health capability that's, that surges to meet the needs of our students who may be stressed, who are worried about their families back home when they come here and so on. It's a different world that we're in today. And to defeat this invisible threat, we must adhere to these public health best practices. If some untoward event occurred, the president has pushed us every day. I want to know how many doctors, how many beds, how many ICU beds, how's our EMS system doing? How do, what do we do if a disproportionate amount of students or faculty were to get sick? Now, we don't expect that, but in planning for emergencies, you always model the worst case scenario, just in case to be sure we're prepared. And we're where we are because of the lack of a national plan from the get-go. You know, Arizona has lagged behind, unfortunately, in testing and tracing and so on. And as you said, uh, we have to take control of our own destiny because for a whole host of reasons, you know, the hyper-partisanship, the craziness from the, na from the national level down. What we really needed was a national plan, a framework to guide our states, okay? Not to dictate, but to guide the states supported by federal dollars, okay? But recognizing that each state is going to have different incidence, prevalence of disease, and so on. Population density is different. But to be able to meet the states, instead, we've had divis divisiveness. And each state has kind of been on their own. And so for whatever the reason here, we've struggled and don't have the testing. But for all the students, uh, for their families, wherever they are uh, across the globe, uh, I, I think we need to take this very, very seriously. And if, if I could, uh, if I could admonish everyone, stay away from people, cover your face if you have to go out, continuously wash your hands. You know, every encounter, everything you touch, have some gel, uh, wash your hands with soap and water. So we're going to require, as Rich said, uh, the the uh, answer to the question, will we be open August 24th? The answer was yes, but it will look very, very differently on this campus uh, than it did when everyone went away for spring break in, in March. We're gonna hold people uh, uh, to some very strict rules. We'll have physical distancing, we'll have safe safeguards, we will meticulously uh, sanitize uh, areas of high traffic. Um, the number of uh, students in a class will be dramatically reduced. We'll do all of those things. So I, I can't emphasize more what Rich said. We all need to follow the rules. I would say if we just lock the country down right now and we all wash our hands, covered our face and stayed away from other people, within a month, the whole country could be out of this. Uh, we're not gonna get that, so we have to do what we can do in our own community. And as Rich said, 
we're going to be watching this every day of the entire academic year because we're going to be in this for the whole year and maybe even into next year. We may be here a year from now having this same discussion. Uh, my hope is that things will be better. People will follow the rules and and, and we will get this, uh, this virus controlled. We are not going to eliminate the virus. We just have to have good public health hygiene to mitigate. What we've said from the start, we need to have control of our own destiny of testing here at the University of Arizona. We can't depend on others. So that's why we developed our own antibody tests. We created uh, swabs and kits for PCR testing. We're running those tests in-house. I could not be more proud of the scientists, the virologists, the public health experts that have come together in this time of crisis to provide this unique service to our community. But we have to test and we will test frequently here at the University of Arizona because that's the only way we can find out how to contact trace and then how to isolate. The, the symptomatic patients are very easy. If you have symptoms and we'll have lists of symptoms and everyone will be asked to do a, a daily wellness check and we're depending on the honor code for people to be honest about, do you have a fever today? Are you not feeling well? Stay away from other people, protect yourself and protect others. The Board of Regents has been uh, extraordinary and supportive of our president and the other presidents in the university system to let them go out and get the best practices. Let's make university safer, encouraging our universities to take the lead in the community where we have the scientific acumen to be able to make those decisions and inform uh, local and state politicians on best practices. None of these decisions were made empirically. None of these decisions, well, I think this, no. Every single decision about the options were based on science, were based on risk benefit analysis. In fact, Bobby, I think I should mention, we spent the whole day yesterday with the president being challenged by the president on risk benefit on every single decision we've made. What is the data? What's the risk? What's the benefit? So that we could come up with that good decision. But here, what we are trying to do because of the control of our faculty, students and staff, with their compliance, we can drive down transmissibility to very acceptable or absent levels where this is a safe haven. Yeah, Holly, I think it's gonna be most interesting to get to the questions, but I, uh, Rich, thank you for bringing up uh, the incredible work you're, you're helping to spearhead for, uh, uh, with, the, with the mayor, the vice mayor, the city council, uh, the chair of the board of supervisors, the county uh, executive, um, it, it just makes sense because we can try to control our own bubble, but it's going to be a highly permeable bubble. And we, yeah, have, we, to, we have to. I'm just going to say we should we should really give a shout out to uh, uh, Mayor Romero and uh, and and the uh, and our uh, county supervisors as well as uh, uh, Chuck Huckleberry, who was our executive for the county. I mean, they have been great partners and willing to sit down with us and share their best practices as well as ours.